Cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer worldwide in women. Approximately 660,000 women in the world will be diagnosed with cervical cancer this year, and over 350,000 women will die from this disease. So today we're gonna to talk about what are some of the treatments for early cancer of the cervix, or how do we detect if there are abnormal changes on the cervix that may need to additional testing. Well, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nefertiti Khan. I'm a board certified gynecologic oncologist. And today I'm gonna to talk about the LEAP procedure. The LEAP stands for loop electrosurgical excision procedure of the cervix. It's a common surgery that's done to treat cervical dysplasia. The PAP test is a screening test for cervical cancer. And we know that about 99% of all cancers of the cervix are caused by human papillomavirus. Well, many patients will be infected with human papillomavirus, but not many will get cervical cancer. Now, what we look for is people that have HPV persistence, where that human papillomavirus lingers. And most women that are young and healthy and have a strong immune system, their immune system will fight the HPV virus and it goes away. But there are some patients who don't always know why the HPV lingers and persists. Now we do know that smokers have a higher risk of having HPV persistence where it lingers. Patients with a weakened immune system, whether that's due to a transplant patient, patients with autoimmune diseases, patients with HIV, we know those patients don't clear the HPV virus as easily as others. So those patients are at higher risk for getting cancer of the cervix. And for them, we do pap testing a little bit more frequently. Well, if you had a pap test and your pap test came back abnormal, the doctor may have told you if, um, that you need a colposcopy with biopsies in the office. All that means is that they've seen that the screening test, the PAP test is abnormal and they want to do additional testing. Well, biopsies in the office with a colposcopy will let them know if you need any additional testing beyond that. So if you have a um, abnormal PAP, and let's say your provider has you come back for office colposcopy with biopsies, that means they need additional testing. If those biopsies show CIN1, most of the time, all you do is just repeat your PAP in one year. And if you're smoking, we'll advise you to stop smoking. If your biopsy shows CIN2 or CIN3, which is moderate to severe dysplasia, then your doctor may talk to you about having an excision procedure. There's several different types of excision procedures. One is LEAP, which we'll talk about today. Another one is called neck cone, and I'll put a video about that in a few weeks. But today we're going to talk about the LEAP procedure. So the LEAP is a very common procedure. It's oftentimes done in the office. It can also be done in the operating room. It will depend on your provider. They'll let you know where the procedure will be done. And you're placed on the exam table. And just like having the colposcopy in the office, you'll have a speculum placed in the vagina where they can, your doctor can see the cervix. And the LEAP procedure, usually they'll, um, your doctor will give you uh, some anesthesia, usually it's a local anesthetic to kind of numb the area to reduce pain. Then a small wire loop, <laughs> L-O-O-P, which is where we get part of the name LEAP, is used to excise a portion of the cervix. Now with the LEAP, the edges are cauterized, and so that does help reduce risk of bleeding, which is why this procedure is commonly done in the office. Once your provider has removed that portion of the cervix, it's sent to a pathologist to be evaluated under the microscope. That pathologist will tell us if you have you know, severe dysplasia, mild dysplasia, some of the terms we'll use is CIN2, CIN3, or even if there's invasive cancer, your pathologist will let your doctor know if there's any abnormal changes. And then after that, the pathologist um, will also describe the margin status, you know, does the dysplasia extend to the margins? And so those are some of the things that the doctor may talk to you about once they get the pathology report. But the procedure itself is very easy, it's very quick, and it's very safe. Some of the risk of the procedures are bleeding. You may have bleeding up to two to three weeks after the procedure, and this is common. Typically, your provider may tell you if you're bleeding more than one pad an hour for two straight hours, or if you're passing big clumps of tissue to let the office know or let your doctor know, because that may be signs that you're bleeding a little bit more heavily than others. And other things your provider may tell you is to have pelvic rest. So pelvic rest just means you know nothing in the vagina after the procedure because we want to reduce the risk of infection. So your nurse or the provider may tell you to abort tampons, you know, intercourse, you know, douching, you know, tub baths. So those are kind of things that we talk about when we're saying pelvic rest. We just want to decrease the risk of infection. Some of the other things to look out after you've had a leak is that it can cause early labor or preterm labor because that portion of the cervix, although it does grow back, it's not as strong as it was before you had the procedure. So if you're 
getting pregnant after this procedure years later, let your obstetrician know that you did have a biopsy of the cervix and that you had you know, a leak procedure, and they'll know what to look for to make sure they monitor the length of your cervix and also the strength of your cervix to avoid preterm delivery or preterm labor. Another complication of the procedure is cervical stenosis or scarring of the cervix. That can happen, um, not always, but it can happen, so your doctor will monitor you for that and that can make um, getting pregnant a little bit more difficult in the future. But typically that opening can be dilated and so that will reduce the scarring. But overall, the purpose of the procedure is to make sure that any pre-cancer changes are treated and to detect if you have any evidence of an early cancer in the cervix. The procedure is very safe, it's very cost effective, and oftentimes done in the office. Well, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you want more information about this topic, watch this video next. Thank you.